what I would like to do is a brief introductory uh, presentation to just explain the project. And then what we are going to have is presentation of three country studies which were done as part of the project, Kenya, Ethiopia, and Rwanda. Uh, Arnie Bigston will be discussing at the end, and we will try to time it such as to leave uh, time for questions and discussion. Let me just do a three or four minute introduction to overview of the project. Some of these things we've heard already in the conference. Uh, we know about the sort of pessimism about the situation in Africa and how that turned into optimism. You can see that even in different issues of The Economist, who seem to change their views from one year to another about the situation in Africa. Uh, but there were a lot of positive assessments about the African situation in uh, around 2010, 2011, but alongside also a lot of quite negative views. And there was sort of a mixed story, and it wasn't quite clear what the story was. And the purpose of this project was to try and look across different African countries to really understand what was happening, not just in terms of growth, but also in terms of poverty reduction. What was driving it? What were the policy implications. And you and you wider set up this project on growth and poverty reduction, which looked at studies of 16 countries. There's the book online on the, on, on the wider website, so you can access it whenever you like. 16 carefully conducted uh, country studies, where we tried to follow uh, a, a similar type of approach in the different countries. Those countries together are about three quarters of the sub-Saharan African population, nine of the largest 10 countries, and roughly over a period of about 20 years. Uh, we put together good teams, uh, typically from country authors working with international experts who were expected to analyze the data as best as they can and uh, with a broadly similar approach to the extent it was possible. But to emphasize both the synthesis and interpretation of the results in order to explain. The basic message is there's quite a lot positive, but there's also things that are not so positive, and there are some good success stories here, but it's not everywhere, and we feel that there's a lot of challenges. We said this was a case of two cheers rather than three. Uh, progress, but... Uh, now, if we look at the, that, the red bars compare growth in, uh, it, from 1980 to 1995, the blue bars from uh, 1995 to 2014 for different regions of the world. Sorry if those are a bit small. The one on the right is Sub-Saharan Africa. We have negative growth in the 80s into the 90s, turning into positive growth. Same thing, uh, positive growth everywhere else. Look, though, that the African growth, this is per capita growth, is actually lower than most other regions. Look at the 16 countries, same thing. The, blue bar, the red bar is the early period, the blue bar is the later period. Well, what you have there is quite a variability of growth experience. They're not all growing fast. Some of them are growing fast. There are Ethiopias, there are Mozambiques, there are Nigerias, but there are a lot of cases that are not growing fast. So that's one first message of the, uh, of the book, is the variability of the growth experience. Child mortality as an indicator, well, is almost half since 1995. The top line there is Sub-Saharan Africa. It's reduced in other regions of the world, but look how much higher it is in Sub-Saharan Africa now. Another indicator is secondary enrollment. The bottom line is, is Sub-Saharan Africa. Yes, good progress, but again, much below other regions of the world. But these indicators do suggest progress. Now, the, the idea of the GAP project was to move beyond cross-country data, well-development indicator-type data. Authors were asked to look at the available macro data to see what that tells us about growth and drivers of growth, to look for comparable household survey, to look at DHS data, to look at a whole range of other information, to try to assess the data critically, to try and uh, uh, consider whether the data valid, whether the data consistent, and to what extent did they tell a consistent story, and more than anything, to try to explain what was happening. So there were a number of project meetings, like this, where people met together to discuss the results. And in summary for the story, um, we have basically, f we felt we could classify countries into four different cases. Good growth and good poverty reduction, there we have four countries, we're five countries rather, we're gonna hear two of those cases today. 
but we have another five cases with good growth performance, but very poor or very disappointing poverty performance. And then we have a number of other countries that didn't even have good growth performance, and therefore, almost by definition, didn't have good poverty. And then there were cases like the Democratic Republic of Congo, where we really felt there wasn't enough information to be confident about the conclusions. Now, from this point, we'll move to presentations of two of the successful cases, Ethiopia and Rwanda, and one of the disappointing cases, which is going to be Kenya. So we're going to invite the country authors to, to present these cases. The first we have is the case of Kenya, which is going to be presented by Germano Mwabu.